Hey, do you believe in God? I hope you do. Maybe you believe in a theoristic God, which is doesn't make sense to me. There are lots of deities, lots of beings that have power. And the none that I see are the creator type energy or the universe. It's just a little being like you and I, except these beings live a hundred thousand or a million or a billion or a trillion years in an energy form. So similarly with this idea of a Christian God, okay, I'm going to dismantle this Christian ideology or theology for you now. If you're a Christian that uh, clicked on this video accidentally, you should turn away now. Otherwise, I'm going to destroy your illusions. Here we go. Jesus Christ, from all our accounts, was probably a... Almost for sure he was trained by Indian sages. Because Indians at that time, and virtually now too, are the only human beings, the only culture that can afford wise men. Especially three wise men. So likely this, uh, this uh, Jesus, this historical Jesus, was trained by monks and also, you know, mystics uh, from India. That's the only place that this really was going on. And after he gained realization and gained all sorts of occult powers, he went back to his kind of original staying place and tried to help as many people as he could. And he did crazy things. You know, I don't really know many of the stories of, the, of, of Jesus, but something I just recently kind of glimpsed, that Jesus was overthrowing uh, the uh, marketplaces. Like people were doing business for some reason. Maybe you can share with me in the comment section below why this was. I'm very curious to know this actually. He, uh, and then I saw a video clip of like the historic Jesus uh, being played as an actor. He's overthrowing the tables that people are doing business in. Like, I don't know for what reason. I'm like, yes, there's a spiritual, there's a wise man. So again, Jesus came to people and said, hey, buddies, uh, you know, uh, there's a kingdom of heaven. Or what did he say? The first thing he said was... Um, if you do, I am the kingdom of heaven, or you, you know, the kingdom of heaven is something, something, there's a kingdom of heaven. And then once people started paying attention to him, he said, you know, the kingdom of heaven is within you. He turned it around into them. Yes, the source of God, the source of creation is within you. Not to say that some heavenly father. Now, these things were, these things are now so misunderstood. They have been so badly skewed. It's tremendous. Human beings think that like your God is like some sort of father, like, you know, your biological father. Yeah, a little father. And there's a father in heaven. First of all, there is no heaven. OK, if you think of some permanent heaven out there in the universe and you're going to go to if you look good, good little believer. And poof, now you're in heaven. You're a good little believer. Oh, how long am I here for? For an eternity. Oh, my God. Wow. Really? Yeah. And you're supposed to have fun. So please come on. Go, go, uh, go be here for an eternity. That doesn't make sense. That's not realistic. That's not reality. That's not uh, the universe, okay? Uh, you have to pay attention and study this one right here. Internally look. There's no such thing as like this. Similarly with hell, okay? These are little ideas like, if I want you to do something, hey buddy, you really need to do this thing, this action. Why? Because if you don't do this, there's a very, very bad place. You will go there for all of eternity and you'll spend there forever. Oh, really? Oh God, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, good job. You can't really get away with that now. I can't really get away with that now. Why? Because people are too logically smart. So as logic becomes stronger and as these things are questioned, they will all crumble as they're crumbling now. In about 50 years, all these religions will have uh, very little sales, okay? So uh, in the historic times, the sales of these religions were huge because, you know, human beings were miserable and suffering. So there was a huge demand for this. Like, hey, please tell me everything is going to be all right. Or please tell me there's like some little permanent place because life here is so miserable and hard. Oh, you're saying if I do a little, be a good little boy, I'll go for an eternity somewhere good and happy all forever of always. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. You can't believe that now. Why? Because it's ignorance. That's ignorant. That's, uh, that's not realistic. It's like to kids, you know, we can fool kids. Hey, little, little Timmy or hey, little Billy. If you put a little uh, tooth on, under your pillow, a little tooth fairy is going to wave a wand and put coins under you. Oh my God, really? Oh my God. The, getting, my tooth, tool, uh, getting my teeth pulled is so painful and so hard. But if you say this little fairy and it's going to give me a nice reward for my pain and suffering. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to visit the tooth fairy today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's pull my tooth, daddy. Okay. Pull the tooth pulled. Then you got to uh, you know, make sure the kid's sound asleep and put some coins underneath his pillow. Same thing with this. Okay. Except uh, in religion and Christianity, this was much more nefarious. It was, you know, more in terms of the control. And the historical Christians slaughtered and caused mayhem for almost the entire world. Why? Because they wanted to create a monopoly in this uh, kind of tradition or religion. That's why it's so huge. 
So I don't want to give any disrespect to Jesus, the historical Jesus, because that man is obviously a very wise and ancient master, an enlightened being. And that's all that he was. Not to say that it's some small accomplishment, it's a humongous accomplishment. Also, the psychic powers and capabilities that he had, tremendous, huge. Yet, he's still just a human being, still just a man, and still just an enlightened being. Not the son of the father, or the son of the creator. Hello, buddy. I'm the son of the creator also, okay? And the cat over there is also the son of the creator. The cat and Jesus Christ identical in their form, in their energy. If you say to me otherwise, that there 2,000 years ago, there was this special human being. We used a special. Us were just peasants. Oh, this little special human, okay? The Buddha was special, but not in the same way that I'm just saying special now. Special in terms of his capabilities, you know? Like David Goggins is special because I can't do what that guy's doing. The guy's freaking a maniac. Well, uh, how much he exercises, how much physical power he has and exerts. Wow, okay, let's all clap for him. I can't do that, he's special. The Buddha was also special. The amount of wisdom that he had, insight that he had, the understanding of reality and how big of an impact he left, 2,600 years, his teachings are still carrying on. The Jesus is also a very special human being. What he did, what he managed to accomplish, and the way he died created a ripple effect of people believing in him. But he didn't die for your sins. This is a, a mistake to believe. It's a belief, it's not a reality. I can't die for your sins. Maybe I can die out of compassion to you. Like for example, if you're all slaughtering animals and you're consuming their dead bodies, and I'm going and protesting, hey, don't kill animals. It's not, it's not, it's wrong to kill animals. It, the right thing for you to do is to eat a plant-based diet. That's what a human being is engineered biologically to consume. You're doing the wrong thing by torturing these animals. And somehow I got sucked into that energy and these people that were butchers are also killed me. And at the last, last moment, okay, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They're too ignorant. They, that's true, they are. And then maybe some little religion formed around me. Oh, he died for our sins because we were so ignorant. We're still eating meat. Yes, I did die for your sins in that way. Okay. Similarly, Jesus died for your sins also. Why? Because you're ignorant. People didn't know what they're doing now and people didn't know what they're doing back then. Same thing. Okay. So, coming back to this video, I am God. I'm sure I already pissed off a lot of Christians and you're uh, commenting on my video. Oh, I need to be baptized. Oh, I need to find Jesus. Oh, Jesus is the answer. Yeah, Jesus is the answer. Truthfully. And if he was here now, definitely he would be at the answer. I'd tell, yeah, go. Go straight towards him. Uh, Jesus didn't say go to a little church and worship a little, uh, some little thing. Yeah. Come both. All right, let's come back to the title of this video. I am God, with a capital G. I'm also a God in a lowercase g. I'm becoming like a God in a human form. And I will, you mark my words. There will come a time where I'll be able to claim this, like I am actually a God-like creature, a God-like entity. Not a capital G, which is the topic of this video, but a lowercase g. Like, I'll be like the same thing as Krishna, or Shiva, or Rama, or various other of these wise and enlightened sages that have walked through India that are considered as gods or known as gods. Why? Extraordinary capabilities they displayed. Lots of skills that they have mastered in this game of life. So similarly with this, that I am God, capital G. Why capital G? Because God, we can say, is a source of creation. It's creation. Or is the creator? Or is the energy that's manifesting through me? The energy that's manifesting through these trees as well, okay? Life itself, or creation. So I don't have to do anything to maintain this body. I don't have to do anything to digest the food. The creation has taken, uh, made sure that that's already happening for me. So in a way, the source of creation is within me. It's why the reason why I'm alive. I just have a small part in this life. So in that way, I am God. I am the creator of this universe. Why? Because I'm tied to him. I'm tied to my father. <laughs> I'm tied to the existence. I'm tied to the creator of this universe. Wow. So, <clears throat> in India, there's people called as agoris. I hope that you've heard this term before. And what these beings do, if they have occult and mystical capabilities, they use their own energy, their own prana, and also various physical elements with their occult powers, and they make a being come into form, uh, astrally, energetically. 
And there are many of these beings, countless, like Kali and Rakini and Dakini and whatever else, and they make snakes, and they make all kinds of energetic and etheric beings. They can actually walk. And if you have the perceptive capabilities and if you're energy in tuned, and if you can meditate, these beings can come to you and they can do stuff for you. They can help you. They can heal you, do whatever they want to. Similarly, it's my understanding that the Christian God, largely, the Christian God being not, it, it's a God in the Bible. It's not the God that Jesus talked about. That's completely wrong. The, wow. The story in the Old Testament is like some deity or some being that's like really angry and like, oh, this and that, and I'm this and I'm that. And it's like, buddy, you gotta just chillax, okay? That's a God, but there are many gods, okay? That's a being of extraordinary power. I don't really know what's, uh, what's the same, but it, oh man, I'm getting too far out there. Too far out there in the into the unknown. So let me just explain to you what I understand. If you get uh, you know a billion people to worship some god, like for example, if I gathered a billion people and we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna worship a new god. This god, his name is um, Bu Bu or Babu or something. Okay, Babu. And then these are the characteristics of this god. And then we really pray and energize this, and we dance and and say stories our energy is actually going to fuel this concept. And this concept is actually going to, to become liberated from our minds and actually become a tangible living thing. Just like a human being is born with a physical body and an etheric body, an energy body, and all types of other bodies. Similarly, we can make this being come into existence. But obviously without the physical body, yet with enough mastery and with enough occult experiences, we can actually take this etheric being and make him go inside of a body. We can build a body for him. That, it'll take remarkable kind of uh, expertise to do that, but it's theoretically possible. And this being can walk around and do stuff for us. But still, he'll be bound by the body. So to me, you know, these, these gods, uh, it's not, you're worshiping most likely a lowercase god or just a being. The creator is like a force. It's not some personal thing that, hey, I'm the creator, I'm this and that. It's the very source of creation. It's the thing that created everything. Obviously, the creation is here. And uh, there's also no devil, okay? There are demons. I know this for a fact, direct experience. There are demon demonic entities, for sure, no doubt about it. But there is no one big devil entity. There is nothing like this. Again, there are all of these little creatures that uh, even in the Bible they talk about. Yes, all of these creatures exist. But some one big entity that tries to delude you or deceive you, it's not like that. Nature doesn't work like that. So, I am God. Why? Because it's a truthful statement. I'm connected to the source of creation. I am the source of creation. I'm a byproduct of the source of creation. So I am that also. It's like a fish can say it's the ocean. That's a very accurate statement. Why? Because the body of a fish is being permeated with ocean water virtually in every particle of its being. It almost is the ocean, except a very small part of it is, has you know, physical presence in, in uh, the actual ocean itself. And there are some fish in the ocean, I'm being told that 99% of their bodies are water or 99% of their bodies don't exist. Only 1% of their physical thing is actual tangible thing. Everything else is just water. I mean, ocean water. So just like this, I'm inside a fish inside of the ocean and I am the ocean and the father, my, the ocean is my father and uh, all of this, okay? That's the end of the story. My friends, I have helped maybe 20 plus human, human beings, individuals through the last months of video conversations and you should reach out to me for a spiritual uh, consultation and conversation, okay? Free of cost, free of charge, except uh, I expect a donation from you. Well, I shouldn't say I expect, I don't expect, but if you are benefiting from my talk or if you feel like uh, I, val I provide a value to your life, that's how you can reciprocate, okay? So I'm not putting barriers between me and people coming in contact with me and people communicating with me. I'm much too valuable for that, okay? I can literally change and transform your life in a matter of five minutes. Uh, but I'm not asking for money simply because maybe you don't believe me, maybe you don't have it. And even if you don't have the money to donate, it's okay, you should still talk to me. Why? Because I can change your life. That's it. The PayPal links will be down below for you to reach out to me.
and uh, do so. It'll be uh, very helpful for you. That's it. Take care.